Hey everybody, welcome back to another WeGo podcast YouTube video, aka What Else Is Going On, a podcast where the audio version can be found wherever it is you listen to your podcast, iTunes, Spotify, Amazon Music, all of that good stuff. So um, let's get into some topics. First up, the topic that you have probably heard about over and over and over again, uh, but I still want to talk about it, is Kay, Michelle, and Tamar. So let's get into this really quickly, almost like housewives drama, right? So according to Vibe magazine, Kay Michelle accuses Tamar Braxton of throwing subs and jabs with black country remarks. Kay Michelle and Tamar Braxton's on and off again issues with one another were on again this weekend after the Tennessee songstress called out the Braxton sister for what she believed were subliminal shots thrown her way during a recent interview. Tamar appeared on the 100th episode of the We Sound Crazy podcast, which by the way, Candace just did an episode with them and it was really good. So if you haven't checked it out, you should. It's the We Sound Crazy podcast. And Candace, sis, come on over here. I've been waiting for you for the last like two and a half years, sis. If anybody know her, send her this way. Anyway, uh, Tamar was on the 100th episode of the We Sound Crazy podcast last week where she asked her thoughts, where she was asked her thoughts on Beyonce's Cowboy Carter album and black artists within the country music space. Now, before I get into it, didn't they bring up K. Michelle's name? I meant to go back and watch uh, the interview before, but not in reference to this, just kind of like Black country artist and brought up her name. I'm not sure. But anyway, I think that Black country is so necessary. I'm so happy that people with talent who can actually sing country music that are Black people are finally getting the recognition they deserve. I just really appreciate Beyonce for opening the door for all the other Black artists that have rode that wave behind the floodgates. She then went on to compliment three Black country artists, though she couldn't recall their names before adding, because there were some who should have not been singing country Black music. That was awful, and it was concerning for me. I'm not trying to be funny. It just didn't sound good. And you got to make sure if you're going to step into a new genre of music and represent for us, you got to represent it. It got to be right. Considering their past tension and Kay Michelle's years-long pursuit of country music, many, including the country love song artists, assumed Braxton's remarks were about her. So then she tweeted, Imagine you keep playing with someone who's minding their business, then boom, they sick of you. One tweet and screenshot and it's over for you. Then she said, I don't, then she tweeted, I don't pull stunts, raggedy. <laughs> I pull cards. I, I don't know why I thought that. <laughs> I thought that was funny because I could hear her saying raggedy and, you know, the way she talks, her accent, I could hear it. And then she um, posted a picture of a Muppet, Janice, the Muppet. I'm going to show y'all, even though y'all have probably already seen it, right? So y'all see, she posted Janet, the Muppet, and said, how many times are you going to keep calling for something you can't handle upon its arrival, huh, Janice? Then she tweeted, now I'm going back into my place of slumber, peace, and positivity. I have some goals to accomplish, and I'm grateful for every blessing I'm receiving. I could go there, but I'm going back to minding my business and singing these songs. White prayer hands, glass of, I'm going to say whiskey, and a pen. Then she tweeted, I've grown, I've healed, but I'm not weak. Leave me alone. I'll turn the other cheek, but I'll slap yours first. With the flower emoji. After fans began to tag both ladies within the thread, Tamar replied to a follower who came to her defense, explaining that she was not referring to the former reality star. At Tamar Braxton, her is not talking about at K. Michelle. We've been down that road before, and I'm sure neither wants to revisit that, wrote the fan with Bra Tamar adding. I absolutely was not. I said a few in caps artists. I paid homage to Beyonce for bringing positive attention to country music. There are people who I don't address and didn't mention slash shade to keep mess away. Where was all this chatter when my song went number one? I mind my business and go to work. Braxton went on to reply directly to Kate Michelle. So then uh, Tamar tweeted, I wasn't speaking about you. I would have said your name. I was speaking of country black in quotes music that I have heard before that I didn't enjoy. I wish you the best on all your future endeavors. I only want beef with the devil. The end. While Braxton attempted to move full, move on from the tense moment, Kate Michelle took to the Neighborhood Talks comment section to call out the Notice Me singer for throwing stones and then hiding her hands. So this is Kate Michelle in the comment section of the Neighborhood Talk. 
Y'all know I wouldn't be saying anything. She knows exactly what she's doing. She's been going on for months now. Well, years. She's just very hurt acting out. It has to stop today in caps. The Southern songstress added, she continues to bring me up in some way, throw her shade, then play victim. I'm just not going to keep playing with her. It's played out, but she will in caps stop. I can overlook negativity all day, but don't keep poking at me. Don't keep poking at me even at shows. After adding that she has information on Tamar, this, that the singer would like to keep under wraps. She continued, there's no reason for you to continue subs and jabs. It's like you have to be seen, even if it's shading and negativity. Bitter Betty, live in your talent, not your drama. Now that's the word. Come on. Live in your talent, not your drama. Lesson I had to learn and worked out for me. I have a right to defend and be sick of your SHI. Then she says, I finally say in front of everyone, in all caps, leave me alone or else I stand on that. You should try it. You're nine whole years older than me. You should set an example of some sort. Now go play victim. I'm going to say this. When I first heard it, when I first heard Tamar's interview, I did immediately think, was she talking about K. Michelle? And that could be admittedly because I don't know of a lot of Black female. And I just assumed she was speaking female too black female country singers and she may not have been. So that was an assumption that I made doesn't mean that it was true, but that is who I thought of. And I think I thought of it because of the history of their back and forth. And I had recently watched one of Kay Michelle's uh, country videos. So I, I'm going to say I put that on her because I truly felt like is she talking about Kay Michelle at the end of the day, even if she was talking about an up and coming artist to me, the point in all of this is why did you even have to take it to a negative? Uh, why did you have to put a negative tone on it? She could have given Beyonce her flowers and talked about the artist that she mentioned. She has a right to say, of course, whatever she wants as far as her thoughts, her opinions, but isn't expedient to do it. Is it necessary? Will it bring about more drama? She had to know that even if even if no one thought of K. Michelle, that people were still going to be talking about it and it was going to spread negativity. You didn't have to talk about the country artists that you listened to and did not like. Again, she could have given Beyonce her flowers and the three other country artists that she liked. That's my issue with it all. Why even bring that up? Every You don't always have to say everything that comes across your mind. You were trying to be shady in saying that. And even if you weren't trying to be shady, you should be old enough and smart enough to know that I am a star on this and I'm sitting on this podcast. And this clip is probably going to go viral. Or even if not viral, people are going to see what I'm saying on this podcast. So let me not say there's artists I don't like. It's the same thing with her. It's almost like she can't, it's, it's almost like she just honestly can't even help herself from going in a, big, in a bit of a negative direction before going positive. It's always a little bit of negativity. So again, even if she's not talking about K. Michelle, let's take K. Michelle out of it. The fact that you even went negative in the first place. Why, sis? What was, what was the reason? Seriously. At what point don't you get tired of this? I heard some people thought that maybe she could be referencing Monica, but Monica hasn't, we haven't heard any country from her. Now, unless she was referencing Monica, knowing that Monica said she wants to do one and she just threw that out there. I don't know. But at what point do you not get tired of your name being associated with negativity every single time? It's not even like Tamar comes on says things with her chest that this is what I believe. This is what I believe. She unnecessarily will bring up something negative. And then if the person comes back, okay, Michelle or whomever it is on her, then all of a sudden she's a victim. And that to me, once again, I have said, I've said it over and over again. I used to tell my kids this. You can't do something to somebody and dictate their response. So you can't talk reckless and then 
be mad when they come back and just unleash. So I don't know. Y'all let me know what y'all think. But again, the, the bigger thing for me outside of the K Michelle, the bigger thing is why did you even have to go there? No, I did retweet K Michelle. And when she said she could post one tweet, one screenshot, and I said, post it, sis. I'm just trying to see something. But for research purposes, like nothing shady, just research purposes. Moving on, let's get into some housewives. So we've all heard the news with Alexia and uh, her divorce. So Alexia and Marisol have a podcast and Alexia was talking about it. So I want y'all to hear uh, what Alexia was saying. So let's get into this. So this is her and Marisol on the podcast. Um, Let me start. You know, I'm I'm a podcast for the first two weeks. Actually, still today, it's been three weeks and I'm still going back in my head, like what happened? Yeah. And um. You know, I'm a positive person, so I try to think about all the beautiful times that we had together, right. all of our beautiful trips, and I'm very positive, so I want to remember that, you know, and I don't want to have any anger, but I understand that anger is also one of the grieving stations. Mm-hmm. Um, stations? Or I said sessions, sorry. One stages. Of the, oh, stages. Yeah, yeah, I don't even know what I'm saying. It's okay. Because I find myself, like, lost. Yeah, yeah, yeah talking about strong you know everybody like life doesn't prepare you for like emotional strength you know what I mean it's like we're not born with that emotional strength but no I have it because of all my life lessons yeah yeah but it's like everybody's like you got this you're so strong but but that pisses me off can I tell you I'm strong but I'm human I know you are for the first two weeks actually still today it's been three weeks and I'm still going back in my head like what happened yeah and um you know, I'm a positive person. So I wanted y'all to hear that beginning again. So she said for the first three weeks, oh, it's been three weeks and she was going back and forth in her head about like what happened. So my heart goes out to Alexia. She, in older seasons, I did a, a, uh, resonate with her, if you will. And then in the newer seasons, I was like, mm, but my heart goes out to her because there's a part of me that was like, did she know? And then I'm going to be shocked you know, on the podcast and it'll be my story because it is happening. So sometimes I hate to say storyline because it makes it sound fake, but sometimes your storyline is your life. Um, but then she would be set for going into this next season. But I don't think she's that good of an actress. So I think, meaning, I don't, I don't think she's an actress at all. Like, how am I saying? I don't think that she's putting on right now. I think that she is truly hurt and trying to reconcile like what is going on. So my heart does go out to any woman in that situation. I do wonder, it's a scary thought. Like if she really didn't know, had absolutely no clue, it is a scary thought to be with someone and then you wake up and they're like, "Mm, I don't wanna be with you no more. Cause it can happen, right? So uh, my heart goes out to her. Why are there not cameras up right now? Then again, maybe they're filming themselves. Maybe they'll play footage of her podcast for next season. Who knows? But bravo, what are you doing? And I hate, I hope that doesn't sound callous. But I mean, if if we're going to be following her story, this is, and following the reality, as Carlos King says, then this is the reality of what's going in her life. So going on in her life. So my heart goes out to Alexia. Let's talk about some more housewives drama. Chow, 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 chow. According to Radar Online, Portia Williams' ex, Simon Guabadia, offers 100000 for credible receipts, proving he cheated. I said, let, when I saw that, I said, let me get on the phone because I know I know somebody who knows somebody. What? Um, now you're a... Uh, allegedly, they say you scam people, Simon, so I'm not going to give you my Zell, but I can give you my phone number because I think my Zell's attached to my phone number. You might not be able to do anything with that, right? Or you can Western Union me. That might be best. But anyway, Real Housewives of Atlanta star Portia Williams' estranged husband, Simon Guabadia, is offering a $100,000 cash reward to anyone who can prove that he cheated on his wife. RadarOnline.com has learned. I've increased the cash reward for any credible receipts of my cheating on any spouse, on any spouse, any from 6-14-2019 to 
through 22224. So June 14th of 2019 through February 22nd of this year. Reward has changed from 50,000 to 100,000. Simon wrote in an Instagram post on Saturday, challenge others to do the same. So I guess he's talking about Fallon. And I don't know. I don't know if he's talking about Portia, but I believe he's definitely talking about Fallon. So that was on his Instagram story. Um, as RaiderOnline.com pre previously reported, Portia filed for divorce from Simon on February 22nd. After only 15 months of marriage, she said she decided to end the marriage after reading news reports about his alleged immigration fraud. Simon denied the allegations, claiming in court papers that he has been a perma permanent resident since 1990 and is not at risk for deportation. Yeah, your alias isn't at risk. Your alias has been the permanent resident, not... Okay. Since their separation, Portia has also accused him of hosting at least three women in their marital residence on different evenings. On Thursday, RadarOnline.com broke the news that Simon had filed legal documents accusing Portia of trying to ruin his reputation. He included a threatening text that she allegedly sent claiming that she planned on exposing him to public hatred, contempt, and ridicule. Listen, I suggest you stop spreading lies about me. I'm holding your truth, but I won't for long if you are going to continue to lie on the alleged message from Portia Red. As a direct and proximate result of wife's statements, the husband has suffered and will continue to suffer damages, Simon's lawyers argued. The former couple's divorce battle has turned ugly as the exes continue to war over their prenuptial agreement and their Georgia mansion. What are we going to have for the show with Portia? Are we going to have this same storyline? We're just going to see it play out after we're, re we're reading about it now. And then we'll see it play out. Because what if the judge grants Simon's wish for her not to be able to talk about him like or anything? What is that? Are we going to have anything from Portia? Anything at all? I miss Atlanta. I love Atlanta. Atlanta has always been the top for me. And I've said this before because I could look at the different women of Atlanta and be like, my family's from south, down south and be like, oh, that's my auntie. That's my cousin. Or that's my girlfriend or the shade and how quick they were. You know, black women, come on. We quick. We quick with it here. You know, and just looking at their makeup and their clothes and their body types, watching women who have hips and butt and body and breasts and beautiful lips and eyes and cheekbones and hair, whether it's uh, 4C, 3B, 3A, 2B, any of that stuff. Watching them wear bonnet, Portia wear a bonnet, you know, all of that stuff. So I loved watching these Black women on TV. Even seasons that people didn't like, I still appreciated the fact that I was watching beautiful Black women on TV. Because to a degree, as far as aesthetically is why it's like, oh, we're about the same complexion. I could try that makeup. What's that she using? Oh, I like that. Blah, blah, blah. Um, so it's funny because I first started using highlighter because I would notice years ago Portia's glow and I wasn't a makeup girly at all. I was it was lipstick for me. That was it. And um, I was reading an article that she was in and this was years ago. And. Y'all, I'm not going to lie. I had taken like a little bit, just a little bit of Vaseline because I love Vaseline. Like put it in areas to make it shine, not realizing it was highlighter. So I read an article that she was in and I was like, oh, I'm going to go get some highlighter. And that's when I first started out with highlighter. But, you know, I'm just saying that to say I love Atlanta. Even though Potomac was an all black cast and I was happy to see an all black cast, there was something about Atlanta that just felt home to me. And I am kind of, I'll say this, even if it's a bad season, I'm still going to watch because it's Atlanta, but I hope it's not like, I don't know. I'm just sad. I'm just sad about it. When I went to BravoCon, the Atlanta panel, uh, before the BravoCon, I was against a reboot. I was like, no reboot. No, just because it was Atlanta. 
Atlanta. And I'm, and I'm not saying that I even wanted some of the ones that were on the show to come back the next season, but I still was like, no, no reboot. And after watching the panel, I was like, reboot it, start from scratch, tear it down to build it up again, anything. Right. So I'm just, I'm not even worried for Atlanta. I'm sad because I miss my girls, the Atlanta girls, whatever girls they may be. I just miss Atlanta, you know? And I feel like I see people saying cancel it already, cancel it already. You know how many other franchises OC went through their years? Beverly Hills went through their years. New York is currently trying to rebuild. And Atlanta was the crown jewel of Bravo for years without major scandal. Beverly Hills, it took for Erica Jane to be going through a scandal for them to get those numbers back that they were at. And now the Kyle and Morgan thing, that's enough. Like Atlanta was doing it big before Housewives thought they had to bring a scandal to the show to talk about. So I miss Atlanta. That's all I'm going to say. I feel sad now. <laughs> um, Portia, we're tired though. We're tired. You, Simon, actually, because it's a lot. Portia's not really saying too much in the press. It's Simon. And y'all better be getting at least some of this on somebody's camera, filming separately or something. All right, y'all, I'll be back later. I said it in my previous video and I didn't know if I was supposed to say it yet, but I'm gonna go, go ahead and say it because it's today. But at 2.30 Eastern Central Time, I will be going live over on Kempire's channel. And I'm so excited. Hope to see you there. Y'all, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I can't thank you enough for the support that you have shown me trying to go this channel. You know, I was just thinking the other day, dang, I've been podcasting for eight years. I had another podcast that I started in 2016, loved it. It's different than this. And I've been thinking about taking it off of hiatus. It was supposed to only be on a couple months hiatus and it's been on a couple years hiatus um, called Tales from a Butterfly. And that's more of a, a personal development with a spiritual based podcast. Um, but then I put it on hiatus and started doing this one because I love uh, talking about things with you guys on the podcast. And I also love interviewing. That's like my number one. So I'm going to try to get more people on to interview slash talk about pop culture relevant things. But um, thank y'all so much for just building with me and being part of this building process. I'm only 114 subscribers away from a thousand, which will be a milestone for me. Um, I said I was gonna drink two margaritas <laughs> while recording. Child, I don't know what y'all might get. So I don't know about that, but thank you, thank you, thank you. Tell a friend to tell a friend to subscribe, comment, share. Um, but I appreciate y'all that are here and I will talk to y'all later. See ya.